Welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at these two Mac Minis. So with these two Mac Minis, this isn't as retro as I usually am, but uh, I got these for a steal because neither of them work. So one of them has a no power issue, and the other, when you push power, the light briefly turns on and then turns off and nothing seems to happen. So I think the no power issue we might be able to resolve. Uh, this one I'm a little more skeptical of, but I wanna give it a crack and see if I can work on a max of a little more modern age than uh, what I typically work on. All right, let's get these guys over to the bench and give them a test. So uh, obviously they didn't come with power cords because the seller didn't have any. Um, I've got a bunch, so that's no problem. No keyboard, no mouse, and I've got lots of that too. So let's uh, get these guys hooked up to this TV here. All right, so I've got the bottom one here ready to go. Let's go ahead and give it power, and then we'll hit the power button and see if it turns on. We do not. All right, so we have the top one all plugged in, ready to go. Let's see if we get any power. So you know what that means. Let's start tearing them apart. See if we can't figure out what's wrong. All right, so we turn this this way. We can pop the bottoms off. So I see they both have RAM, which is a good sign. Let's go ahead and get these cases apart. So I noticed this one is missing these two screws here. Um, and I think that that's where the hard drive would go. So it looks like someone did yoink the hard drive out of that one. All right, and this one, so 250 gig, uh, 860 Samsung Evo. Right, so let's uh, go ahead and get the rest of the guts out of this one here. So we've got some Torx screws here. I'll take the fan assembly out. And with those three out, we can carefully unclip this little connector here. It should just lift straight up. You wanna be careful not to pull on the wires or they'll pull out of the connector. So it's just kind of uh, underneath and flip it up. All right, and with that out, there is another connector here. It's the same kind of thing. This runs to the front and it's got the uh, LED and uh, maybe a Bluetooth connector. I guess I'm not quite sure what's on here, but if you just pull the board out with this connected, it will rip the connector off, most likely. So carefully want to disconnect this one. All right. And there's one more screw here we need to take out. And then we should be able to slide this board out. Oh, we do have one more connector here for the hard drive as well. So let's go ahead and disconnect that and then with that pulled out a little bit so you can see we've got the power connector here so we can disconnect that spin it back around and the whole board should just slide out of the case so now we have our empty case here and we still have the hard drive and power supply in there, but we've got the uh, main system board out. All right. So what I'd like to do next, I think, uh, I do have a replacement power supply here. Um, I, we, so we don't need a hard drive connected. I don't think we need to have the front panel connected for the led. Um, and I think it, I think it's an IR port. So up here in the front, I think this is uh, IR and this is the LED. So I think it should boot without that. So let's go ahead and try this paste from power supply. We will need to put some RAM back in here, of course. And I will want to connect the fan. It may not run without the fan installed. So we'll just clip that back on. Just kind of set it in here gently. And then we can connect our power supply up. 
All right, so now we just need to plug it in. Let's hook up a monitor and see if we can see anything coming out of this thing. All right, so I've got my monitor hooked up. Now let's go ahead and plug this in. You want to be careful because it shouldn't be any exposed wires, but you never know. So let's go ahead and hit the power button here. Oh, we got a chime and the fan's spinning. Oh, I should probably hook up HDMI to, to the Mac itself so we can actually see if it's doing anything. Flashing question mark. And that is what we'd expect. So this one seems likely to be working. Um, so let's go ahead and I think we can take these components and put them back in to the case, but we'll need to swap the power supply out for this no one good power supply here. All right, so we need to get this power supply out. Uh, the first thing to do, there's a little clip here. We need to pull this out. So that comes out and then the connector itself, you can turn clockwise like that. And so that frees that up. And then there is a torque screw here, which we need to take out. All right, so with that screw out, we can pull this black plastic piece towards us, and that allows the whole power supply to slide out. So this one is no good. And then we'll take our no and good power supply and slide it in. Let me make sure the cable goes over. And that just kind of sits down back into here. So that's what's gonna hold it in place. So let's go ahead and reconnect that torque screw. So that'll hold things firm. All right, and so with our power connector, you slide it into the two indents and then turn it so that it's upright, about like so. And then we can take this little locking clip and re-secure it in here. All right, and that should keep our power supply from moving around. So now we can take our board. And we need to remove the fan very carefully disconnect the clip here and then this should just slide back in all right and before we push it all the way in we want to reconnect the power all right so let's reconnect the hard drive cable we've got our ram connected let's reconnect the front panel Reconnect our fan here. So I will uh, tighten these down now because we need to make sure we have good connections now that it's back in the case. All right, so I think we're ready to give this thing another test and see if it's going to uh, continue to work here. So I'll just leave it upside down for now, no problem. We'll take our HDMI. So I don't know what's on this hard drive. Uh, I've not booted off it obviously ever but it does seem like it's booting. Well, that is definitely a good sign. I don't have a keyboard or anything hooked up yet, so I can't really test it out. Uh, I imagine it's gonna be password protected. Yes, this uh, apparently was a user named Trollbytes. All right, well, that's really good news. I think we have fixed this system with just a simple power supply swap. All right, so. Just a couple more steps of reassembly. So we need to put the Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna back on and that connects under here. Now in all of computing, these tiny little coax cables give me the most trouble of any connection ever. So you have to be so precise to connect them. I can just never do it easily. It's always a pain. All right, there we go. We got that stupid thing connected. Now we can take our antenna here and secure it back down. And then we can reattach our base. Set it to the open position. And then spin that to closed. All right, so that should be our Mac Mini hardware-wise fixed. Now we just need to get the software running on it and uh you know give it a clean it's a little dirty we can take care of that no problem 
uh, I got into it and let's just take a look and see what we're running here. So we're running Mac OS Catalina 10.15.7. This is the Mac Mini late 2012 with a 2.5 gigahertz dual core Intel i5. And we've got six gigabytes of RAM. Let's see, 1,500, 1,600, 1,700, All right, so we have this other board here that's not cooperating with us. Not doing a whole lot of anything. Let's just uh, start looking at it, see if we can figure out what it might not be happy about. We'll do the same thing. We'll reconnect the front board. Yeah, so we get the light on briefly, and then the light goes immediately off. All right, so did a little bit of research online, and it's probably one of a couple things. Uh, it seems likely that the GPU itself might be cracked. I could take the uh, heat sink off here and take a look at that, but... That doesn't seem like a lot of fun. But what I found is some guy in line had the exact same problem I'm seeing here, and he said it was this capacitor right here, which is a 330 microfarad, I think it's like three volt or something. And I don't have any 333 volts, but I have a friend uh, who's been on this channel before uh, who does have a 330 microfarad, like 15 volt. It should be okay. Um, so what I wanna do is take this capacitor out and right now, plus is facing towards the camera, uh, negative facing towards that little post there. This is going to be a little tricky to get out. Might need to increase the temperature of my iron. This is probably all lead-free solder. Oh, she's bubbling. There we go. All right, so I got a couple of 330 microfarad capacitors from Kevin. And these uh, obviously are not SMD components, but that's okay. It uh, has a high likelihood of still working. One thing I wanted to do, if I put my uh, probes from my multimeter here on negative and then touch anywhere in the chassis, I do still have a good connection there. So... Uh, we should be able to solder this on no problem. I'll just kind of uh, wedge it in there somehow and then uh, figure out how to keep it in place later on. But just for a test, we'll kind of just solder it on there. The first thing I want to do is make both legs the same length. Make it easier to solder on. And so I mean, negative this way and positive that way. So this is where I want to solder it onto. So I think first I'm gonna build up some solder on there. I'm gonna turn my soldering iron heat back down to a little more reasonable level. All right, so I'm gonna make sure negative goes on the right here. And then we'll connect positive the left so I believe the operating voltage of the capacitor that would be here is uh, it says it's 0.99 volts so this is actually a 15 volt capacitor so it's a little bigger but again it should be okay if this is really the problem so with that new capacitor in place let's go ahead and hook everything up and see what happens. So we've got this giant capacitor here now sticking off of it. We'll flip the power supply to the other side and flip it upside down. We'll plug in our HDMI cable. All right, well this uh, capacitor might go boom. I guess we'll find out. I really don't think it will. Uh, I'm not sure that it's going to fix the issue, but it's not going to go boom. It's definitely rated for high enough. All right, here we go. All right, so I don't know if the fan is doing the thing where it spins a little bit. Well, the fan is actually spinning full now. This has definitely improved things. The fan's actually spinning. Right, let's 
doing the exact same thing. So let's prop this frame out, put this in back up top. Plug it back in. Huh, I swear it was spinning. But I couldn't really see. Let's make sure our capacitor is still oops, connected. It is. All right, so I think that leaves the final thing to check as the GPU. And that is our CPU and GPU. Now that is some very, very dried up thermal paste down there. Shouldn't cause it not to boot. You know, if it was uh, booting and not running well, that would be an issue, but should still at least turn on, not just immediately turn off. All right, so for a visual inspection of the GPU, which supposedly can get cracked, I don't see any sort of problems here. Now, one other thing that they said they did was attempting to reflow the GPU just with a, a heat gun. And I think at this point, we don't have a lot of other options, so I am more than happy to try that. All right, so I've got my heat gun here. I'm mixed amongst all my other cables. Looks like you got it set to 400, that'll be fine. All right, so instead of 400, I'm just gonna heat the crap out of this GPU and see what happens. All right, I'm gonna go nuts for a few minutes now, so I feel like I'm gonna take a break here, turn off the hot air, and then let it cool. All right, well, uh, let's reassemble. Let's hit it with a little bit of uh, Arctic silver here. Not too much, but also not too little. Plug it in and give it some juice. Same thing. briefly turns on all right so despite all the work we couldn't get that second one going but we did get that first one up and running so you know hey not bad one out of two and you know i'm not as familiar with uh, a lot of these more modern devices so i said i think that's a pretty good win still anyway i hope you enjoyed the video and if you have any other things you think i should try on that second one i'm more than happy to give that a whack let me know in the comments so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed and we will catch you in the next video <coughs> Make sure to like and subscribe and watch more of our videos later. Bye!